All right. A good afternoon to you all. I want to welcome you to yet another webinar on legal writing, how you should do it and why you should do it. Um, greetings from Uganda, Kampala. And I want to welcome our members from Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, Zanzibar, Tanganyika, and DRC Congo. This afternoon, my duty is very simple. One is to introduce our moderator and to welcome the panelists who have been very gracious enough to offer this training to our East Africa Law Society members. Please allow me to introduce Mr. Philip Karugaba, who is the head of ENS Africa in Uganda. His core practice is in the area of capital markets, mergers and acquisitions, private equity, energy, project development, infrastructure, construction, and real estate law. Philip is recognized by respected ranking agencies, um, including chambers and partners, as one of the top corporate lawyers in Uganda. He supports clients with complex corporate and financial transactions across a broad range of sectors. He has also gained experience in M&A and capital markets, including cross-border listings, private equity, and financing deals. He has also previously served as a lecturer at the Faculty of Law, Macquarie University. He is both a member of the Uganda Law Society and the East African Law Society. In addition, Philip serves on the board of directors of a number of companies. Members, please welcome with me Mr. Philip Karugaba, who will moderate this very important webinar. Philip, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. President. It's always a pleasure and a big honor to be at this forum uh, of service to the East Africa Law Society and speaking to our membership in the East African member states. It's really, really exciting to think of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Southern Sudan, and now the DRC. The family is growing. And um, being in this professional setting, being part of enhancing skills, growing skills is always very, very exciting. So a warm welcome to our East Africa Law Society membership. It's, uh, I think our numbers are creeping up slowly. We've passed the 100 mark and we are hoping for more. Uh, today, I'd like to give a special welcome to Alex Holtam and Alex Kaminsky, who are with International Law Farm Services, ILFS, and they will be speaking to us about why you must write articles and how to do it better. Uh, we would like to run a small poll, and let me see if, if I can work this out. Um, okay. Let me see how I can work out this poll. We wanted to run a small poll, but what I'm going to do is maybe invite uh, people to respond. Where have they been chatting? Okay. Yeah, I see in the, in the chat room. Maybe I can do it there, yes. Okay. Right. And just a couple of questions to get the flavor to give our panelists, our speakers today, an idea of who we are and what we do. So um, just in no particular order, the first question is that do you, you as a participant, do you write articles as a lawyer or as a law firm? And, you know, a quick, uh, <laughs> as a cross-examining lawyer would say, a simple yes or no will do. Okay. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. There you go. No, 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 no. A couple of yeses there. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Mm. Okay, that's very good. And if I may ask a question, another question, a follow-up question, and thank you all very much for the, for the enthusiastic responses. Has anyone written more than 10 articles in the last 12 months? 10 articles in the last 12 months. Okay, I was about to say the A's have it, but I see the no's are really catching up now, really racing. No, 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 no. Okay, then even those who are saying yes, one, one or two are saying they need to write more. 
uh, Lucien Osombo, you have done more than 10. Congratulations. You are outstanding. I think you're the only one who's posted that you've done more than 10 articles. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, yes. Okay. Now, this second question then will be biased because it was, if you do write articles, how useful has it been in driving business to you? I think inevitably only those who said yes to the first question can answer this one. Oh, very useful. Okay, Macha, thank you very much. It's been very useful. Okay. Uh, Mary Mutuki, it's not, not much. <laughs> John Patrick Okoth, you say useful. Soka Deodatis, you say it's useful. Jacqueline Kap Kapinga, somehow. Okay. Okay. Writing articles has helped me secure a job. Anthony Wagila, I wish we could give you a microphone <clears throat> for that test testimony. Okay. Okay. Right. Paul Lingoto, you're not a lawyer, but you've written more than 10 articles on arbitration in the last 12 months. Okay, very interesting, very interesting, very interesting. Right, now the last question in our, let's call it makeshift poll, is where do you publish your articles? And here I would like to give, uh, you know, what we're thinking about, what would like you to respond to. Are you publishing on social media? If social media, uh, is it LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook? Ah, and you know, if I asked my children, they would be saying other things, other animals, I don't know. These are the ones I know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. If you have others, please share. Or, or do you publish on professional journals? What is your forum of choice? Website, university journal, LinkedIn, office repository, okay? Professional journals, academic journals, peer-reviewed journals. Okay, this is very interesting. Very interesting. If I'm publishing to get to, 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 to grow my, to do thought leadership, to grow my business, to drive business to myself, where would I be putting this stuff? Okay, newspapers, that's Helen Kamgisha, the farm website. Okay, Prudence Marcella, which social media are you using? Okay, website and legal platforms, LinkedIn maybe, LinkedIn. John Patrick of Court says he's on LinkedIn. Right. Aha, there you go. Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Okay. I don't know where to find Insta Instagram. Even Instagram is a great platform. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. I hope that has given us a very exciting fast-paced, informative start. I think we've derived, should I call it, a sampling of what people are doing and how they are doing it, okay? And I think there's no better way to introduce the subject and hand over to our, our speakers today, Alex. And Alex, the floor is yours. I thank you. And um, should I say good viewing, good listening, all the membership. Thank you. Hi, Philip. Thank you. Uh... Thank you very much for the for the very kind introduction um, and and the fascinating survey. I thought there was some uh, some but there's quite a lot of the, the issues that we'll we'll touch upon today that uh, that were covered by that. Um, uh, hopefully, you have our presentation up. Our PowerPoint is that um, is that visible to everyone? I'm, 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 I'm going to assume the, the PowerPoint is, is now visible. Um, all right, got it. Okay, that's, um, okay. that's, that's great. Um, IT, I, IT, good, yes, it's now up. Yeah. Could, could, could we good. move on to the next slide? I think I'm, I, I, I don't think I have power over it. Um, okay, th th this is pretty much our, our running order for, for today. Um, First, I'm going to take the opportunity, it probably won't surprise you, to tell you a little bit about us, because um, 
because we, we, we're here. <laughs> we, we, for the same reasons people write articles, we, I guess we're, we're giving this presentation. Um, second thing I'm going to touch upon is um, is common mistakes. I think I think you can learn an awful lot about um, from from really what goes wrong. And uh, and I think that's uh, quite a, a probably an interesting place to start. So that uh, if you if you if you look at the mistakes, you you hopefully won't won't repeat those. Um, then I think the first the starting point for writing an article is always you know why am I doing it? Who who's going to read it? Um, what do I want to achieve out of it? So we'll we'll look at that issue. Um, we'll um, we'll look at the the issuing of. Um, uh, of, uh, I guess it is being strategic. Um, you don't really want to, art, to, to write articles uh, unless unless you know why you're doing it and what what your your objectives are. And, and and certainly, one thing we would suggest is that you stand back, probably at least once a year, and possibly with each article, and and, and just sort of ask these questions before you spend a long time uh, writing an article that that. That may not actually deliver your objectives. We'll look at planning an article, um, and then, then essentially, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Alex Kaminsky, um, who who will look more at the sort of mechanics of, uh, of of writing an article and and how we can use an article to to grow our business. One of the things I would say is the greatest focus of this um, of this. Uh, webinar today is around sort of using articles to to, to grow business um, as we'll see there are there are a number of reasons why people do write articles but uh, I guess you know that that's that's what it's all about just very quickly about about ILFS we're um, international law firm solutions we're a UK based um, consultancy that that specializes in helping independent firms develop international business um we we do a range of, of things around uh, ev ev everything is around the space of helping independent firms develop international business so in addition um to, to helping firms with uh with articles and um and the placement of articles uh we help for example probably our biggest service line is we help firms get ranked in directories like chambers and league 500 um we help them with with Things like networks. Um, we we sometimes run roadshows for firms. Um, if if you go to our website, there's a, there's a whole range of um, of, of reasons uh, of, of sort of services we provide. But the sort of the common space is is helping firms develop international business. Um, so common mistakes. So a good place to start. Um, uh, I think the first the first thing we'll look at sort of. Who is your target audience um, going down there? But yeah, a, a lot of a lot of individuals, a lot of people will will write um, and spend a lot of time writing articles that may be good, may be bad, um, but uh, they they either don't think through enough who they want to read that article, or um, they simply pitch it wrong. Um, they if if they if you're Pitching a CEO, you probably want the big pitch of the commercial facts. If you're pitching the technician within a firm, you probably want to go into to, to more detail. Um, but but you know you want to know who you're who you're targeting and, and why that's going to lead to something. And it it is a big mistake that a lot of people make. Um, secondly, a lot of things are just plain boring, um, which I I'm, I'm sure that that's not applicable to anything anyone. Who's, who's viewing this right? Uh, who's viewing this webinar um, that they write? But um, I mean, I, I am in the fortunate or unfortunate position of um, of, of receiving a very very large volume of um, of newsletters and publications and et cetera et cetera that people write, and and ever so many of them you start to read, and and within I'm, I'm afraid within seconds. You know this isn't something that's that, that's going to be um, an interesting read, um, going to add any value to you, um, and and you move on very quickly. We we have a stat later on about how quick people move on from from articles, but I'll I'll save that for for a bit later on. Um, one of the reasons articles are, are, are um, often um, ineffective 
or more often boring really is is simply that they are too long and they are too complicated um there are certain audiences where it is absolutely fine to have a um, to, to go into things in in great detail um but you know bear in mind people don't have that much time to to to, to look at articles so if, if you if you produce something that's sort of five six pages long um my guess is a lot of a lot of people will will turn off before you uh before you get to the end um the if it's if it's too complicated you will just lose your audience because they they won't spend enough time on it and unless you're you're targeting a very very specialist audience um giving too much away what well, this is something we discuss at, at ilfs quite a lot and in particular, I, we, we, we've produced various articles um, and, and I know my colleagues um, tell me that they, they think that we give too much away in, in these articles. And that, you know, the, 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 the general concept of this being that you write an article and someone else reads it and, uh, and you tell them how to do it. Um, I have to say my personal opinion, I, it's not one shared by all of my colleagues, but my personal opinion, is that if you if you write a decent article, particularly if you write the sort of uh, the headline points and you write all the headline points, yes, it is true that some people will will decide to um, to um, to sort of steal your ideas and and take away the, the the fruits of your labor. However, the majority, I think. People who, who have a demand for that service, most of them will say, we need someone who knows this. Um, we don't really want to, um, to invest in, um, in someone learning to, to do it um, internally. I don't want to do it myself. Um, therefore, more people will come to you as a result than, than if you go, go the other side and not, not give away very much information, in which case they will simply think you don't have the, uh, the know-how and the knowledge to, um, to, to do this. Um, next point, um, no, or sorry, can, can, we go, can we go back to, um, uh, no, yeah, sorry, got just the, the last two points. Um, no or wrong or the wrong recipients um i mean this this is a sort of mirror image of the of the target audience if um if i mean one 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 theme you will hear sort of me battering away at all day is you may write the best article ever um on whatever subject um but if um let's say you write a fantastic article on employment law um, about employment law in your jurisdiction you then post it on your website and you know, the reality is not that many people kind of will keep a keep a, a, an eye on your website to see what's been updated and what new articles have been put you then send it out to a small distribution list of um, a, a mail shot of people you've got on the distribution list it, it re it's received by 300 people um 10 percent of those are interested in employment law you've gone to all that effort to to produce an article that's maybe going to be read by 30 or 40 people um so you've really got to focus on the distribution and the um and the uh, and the effort that um that you've got to put into it um i i, I would i would certainly say that distribution is as as important as the the content of the article if the article's rubbish, the article's rubbish. But if the article's great and it doesn't get distributed, it, it's nearly the same effect. Um, finally, the sort of question of shelf life. If you can write an article um, and, and it stays relevant for a time period, um, you can use it again and again. Um, you write an article that, um, that, that, that is sort of obsolete almost overnight perhaps something on a, on a new piece of legislation that's then overtaken or uh, or you know, a sort of interim decision in a court that uh, that then may be overridden by the uh, by the superior court or, or whatever um, you know by the time you've written it um, it, it, it has almost lost its, its impact so um, if you can write an article um, do so one, one, one article we have on our on 
on our website in which we've distributed for while mail shots which we've put on uh, linkedin and, and twitter and you know, any, anywhere else we can think of is um is, is about um directory rankings and why firms are disappointed with directory rankings now that's something we wrote about four years ago um and it is we've, we've we've updated it once with with some new developments but it is pretty well as as um in the same issues arise as they did four years ago so we've got so much value out of that um so that's it could we could we so could we move on now please? so right um so um why why do you write an article um it, it's fun that's some, something alex wrote but so I'm not sure I quite write in articles, fun, but, uh, but you know, if, if you're if you are so minded, writing articles is uh, is is fun, um, and it, it, it's it's also a way to think through a problem. Um, you know, if you if you have an issue, you know, a new piece of um, legislation or a commercial development or something like that. And you actually want to sit down and think through what the consequences are. Writing an article would be a very, very good way of doing it. The um, clients will um, it, send you the clients is important, but it's almost secondary to, to do that. You will often write articles to support existing clients, and the the articles that you write to support the existing clients won't always but will sometimes be different from the articles that you write to to try and win new clients it may well be that um the, the ones to support existing clients may be more technical um and um and, yeah, and go into to to a bit more detail uh, and, and maybe again targeted at possibly the more junior people um if you're trying to win business or or, or indeed um if you're you're trying to to, to to, to win more business of existing clients you know above all you're trying to demonstrate that you're an expert in this subject um to to build their trust and confidence um in it and, and or their trust and confidence in you and um and, and and that sort of you know that's really sort of one of the absolute core core pillars of this uh, of this exercise uh, you know, if someone reads an article and thinks they know more about it than you do, then then it's going to undermine your effort rather than um, than, than um, build it. Um, the the question of generation generating leads, and I thought that was quite pertinent to some of the responses that um, that people were giving 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 to the questionnaire. Uh, or, um, is uh, how often does do do articles re, um, result in, um, in in direct uh, instructions and i i'm i would say sometimes um depends on the nature of the article if you if you if you pitch the article right um you know, perhaps some more um than, than average um but don't, just because you haven't got um specific um instructions from from an article as a result of an article it doesn't necessarily mean that you're you're not sort of essentially um going on to the next point building your brand uh if people regularly see articles from you um and, and realize that you have an expertise in in a particular area that that will increase their trust and confidence in you um and you know they may forward an article to someone they may retain it I and mean, again going back to some of the articles we've written we quite often will will mail shot an article and then um then several months later we'll get contacted by someone we've sent it to who uh you know has been sitting on it and thinking well actually you know we, we really could do with some help on this um so um directly generating leads is great but um occasionally generating um or, or but indirectly generating them and building brand awareness is um uh, is is also significant um there's a there's a famous saying about um about somebody i can't remember who it was but said that 50 percent of my marketing budget is uh, is wasted i know 50 percent of my marketing budget is wasted but i don't know which 50 percent and i guess that's around that particular space 
Um, could, could we have a, the next uh, slide, please? Um, right, so be, be strategic. This is, I would say, I've slightly sort of stepped on tactics here as well. Um, one of my favorite saying, plan to fail, fail to plan. Um, yeah, if you don't think of why you're doing something, what you're doing, um, then you, um, you, you, you won't succeed with it. You, yeah, if, you, if you don't know what your own objectives are, um, you're, not, you're clearly not going to achieve them. So um, um, I think the first question to, to, to ask, I mean, this can be a situation where you're either sitting down annually and, and planning um, a series of, of, of articles um, or you're specifically asking the question as to whether you should um, uh, should ask, write a particular article. I think all of this is within a fairly broad ambit um, because you know, some of you are, are very large firms, some of you are very small firms, and it's you know very difficult to be um, completely consistent about that. Um, so, um, so, but it, first of all, you know, you really do have to um, have genuine expertise in something. There's, there's almost no point in writing uh, writing something if you don't. Um, and in, indeed, it can be counterproductive. It certainly can be time wasting, um, and and it may actually undermine your the trust and confidence that you're you're so fundamentally trying to build. At the same time, you know, if if you have some expertise in a subject, writing the article may may build on that expertise and uh, and, and, and and be a self fulfilling prophecy. So, uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I mean, with, with all of this, there is no. These are all issues you need to sort of think of, but there is no kind of hard and fast rule that you say you must do it like this or you you mustn't uh, <laughs> mustn't do that. Um, so who who cares and what's the problem you're helping to solve? I I, I received uh, an article quite recently um, from from a, a firm in in, in Europe, um, and it's uh, it basically was an article about. A, a standard set of terms and conditions and what the article was saying was that these haven't really changed um and it did beg the question um you know who who cares really um it, was, it wasn't a badly written article but but it, it, it no one was going to sit there and go yes you know i've been worrying about that um and and i, I really need these people's help so you know Think about what what it is you're you're trying to to, to present. Um, again, keep on going back to this question of who's your target audience. I mean, yeah, first question I would say is, are you targeting um, existing clients or or potential new clients or indeed both? It, you know, certainly some some articles will cross over over to what sector or sectors are you um, are, are you uh, targeting uh, is it uh, is it maybe uh, you know is this someone for realist uh, real estate sector is this HR directors is this you know what what, what whatever if you're looking at the annual um, question you know, think about how many articles you're going to write over let you know, let's say the next twelve months so you're you know you're doing this at the end of the um, of the year and uh, and yeah. Are we going to write ten articles? Are we going to write three articles aimed at this? So you know, what what what's the plan? Um, and you know, if I write this article, do I have a follow-on article from it that 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 sort of builds on the what I've said in the first one? Um, going back to the the, the sort of built-in obsolescence, um, how long will the um, will the article be relevant? Uh, you know, say. A, a lot of articles. Um, you, what, what, what you will find is that um, something comes to light and there's a new development and people go, yeah, look, that's a really good subject matter for, for an article. Um, however, um, you know, the, day to, the day job gets in the way, so you're, you know, you're filling in your timesheet, you're charging clients for things, and stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, you've then started this article and three months on six months on or whatever 
um, you 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 haven't written it, you produce it, and it's you know it, it's it's obsolete. Try and find subject matters that are that 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 are going to be relevant for a couple of years. That usually means sort of bigger picture rather than smaller detail. Um, we'll um, question of uh, how will you distribute it, which is. Um, Alex is going to talk talk through the the mechanics of how you distribute it in um, in one of the, the the later slides. But but I, I have to say, if if there is one thing I would like you all to go to leave and 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 understand at the end is just how important this is because say. A, 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 I mean, we, we get a lot of articles, uh, we see a lot of articles that do just appear on websites and that, you know, there, there is nothing wrong with that. Um, but if, you know, if, but if your objective is to get um, more than a, a small handful of, um, of, of people to, um, to read it, then, uh, then, then you're probably going to fail in that objective. Um, and, you know, say, I mean, certainly we, we use MailShot a lot. Um, we have, we, we, we use LinkedIn a bit. Um, we, um, and, and it works, you know, the, some of these things work pretty well. Our own experience has been that, that MailShot has been, been more effective, um, but, but that's, you know, that, that may depend on, on individual um, needs and requirements and level of interest. But, but you know, if, if there is, you know, if, if I mean to put to put this in context, if you write three articles a year and they get read by uh, fifteen hundred people each, um, if you've, you've had a hit rate of four thousand five hundred. If you write ten articles a year and they get read read by fifty people each, um, that's uh, five hundred people are reading your article. So the, the 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 distribution is is absolutely fundamental. Although you again, you need to be targeted in the distribution, not uh, not just send it to uh, to anyone. Um, plan a campaign that um, I mean, again, generally, if you just randomly produce articles, send them out, um, post them here, post them there, it doesn't necessarily work very well. And 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 if you can send them sort of much more. Um, you can follow one article with another or one mail shot with another or you can have a series of things on on linkedin or you know whatever that uh, that makes a, a, a huge um difference and then um and finally on this on this slide um there's a question of really how how do you deal with inquiries so you've you've kind of you've put all this effort in you've written your article you've distributed it beautifully um and you don't really know if you're going to get one inquiry or none no inquiries or 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 50 inquiries and i mean certainly our experience of a lot of things is um you can have a very strong feel for how successful um a sort, sort of campaign is but you can also be massively wrong with that <laughs> <laughs> you send out things to um, uh, yeah. You, you think this is going to really hit, hit hit the nail on the head, and people are going to come back and really going to be interested, and no one's interested at all. So um, that's uh, that's quite interesting. Um, so, but but I mean, certainly again, one of the things that we do when we send out um, we, we sort of run our campaigns is we have um, we have sort of standard section of emails that we send back to clients so we've we've got some some sort of supporting documents we've got some key points um we will we will tailor the the, the response um for the first sort of paragraph to deal with the client's particular uh, issues or questions or whatever um but but if you get and, and also how do you deal i mean you know one of the things you do find if you 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 sort of do this effectively is you get a number of inquiries from people who who are not a fit with your business um and you know that's that's kind of inevitable if you if you got your targeting right that's not going to happen that often but how are you going to deal with those i mean we 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 always sort of try and be polite but but don't pursue it uh, 
through the inquiry um, in, in that much detail. So, so that's uh, that's that. Can we can we have the next slide? Okay, right. Well, I, I, in a second, I'm going to um, going to hand over to to Alex Kaminsky. Um, I, I I guess I've got. I'll just make a point on the the. the I, I have I have to confess I've got this statistic off the internet yesterday. So I have I have absolutely no notion of how true it is, but the spirit of it, it is true, is that um, you you write an article and say. 55% of people who read it, and you know that that's only a small number um, of the people you've sent it to, um, give up after 15 seconds. So you've really got to sort of pack a punch and and get people to read it. Anyway, over over to to Alex, and um, I'll uh, I'll take a back seat. Okay, thank you, Alex, and good afternoon to everybody who's watching. Um, so uh, my colleague has convinced you to write an article and um, you have some ideas on a subject. Um, so what next and how can you approve upon that stat we saw? 55% uh, of visitors read your articles for just 15 seconds or less. So I would start, um, start with the structure, draft for yourself a skeleton outline and to provide focus identify one or two important questions that you will answer in the article um, and then next develop the body of the article and um, i'd like to run through um, various key elements of an article that you should pay particular attention to um, obviously, place high importance on your title. It'll be possibly the biggest factor, determining factor, whether you get read. Um, in the news feed of um, article aggregators, um, we can talk about those later, uh, we'll decide whether people click through to your article. And uh, you should therefore use the title to flag up any highlights of your article, any unique angles or analyses. Um, but uh, also be careful to avoid what I call uh, clicker's remorse, where your headline isn't really um, a clue to the content. Um, your first sentence, extremely important. Um, so craft your opening sentence in a way that summarizes the content of the article and draws the reader in. Um, so that um, for, and the first sentence will often be used by um, um, article databases as a summary. Um, headings, subheadings, bullet points, these are also um, very helpful to the reader to navigate the text um, as are um, clearly marked summaries and conclusions. Um, so think carefully about these when structuring your article. Um, headings and subheadings also are used by the search engine engines, and these will boost the uh, boost your rankings, um, your Google rankings, for example, for your article. And do try and avoid um, quirky or funny headings. Um, they don't work particularly well with search engines. Um, Images and video, um, not appropriate for every medium, but um, if they are appropriate, they'll make your pages more dynamic. And they, again, they curry favor with Google. Um, everyone always asks, uh, asks me when I'm, I've ever commissioned an article, how many words should the article have? And the general consensus is um, 1,000 to 2,000 words. Um, I probably err on the side of closer to a thousand words for an article, uh, for a blog post, about 600 words. Um, again, for purposes of the search engine, think about including keywords that you'll want your reader to look at um, to improve your search engine hits. And the, um, in this list of, um, of, of key elements, the conclusion is also extremely important. Uh, 
a lot of people won't read your entire article or your book, your blog post from start to finish, but uh, merely scan it for useful information. So the conclusion is also very important. Um, uh, next, I've, I've put on the slide writing style. Now, this is a big subject, and uh, what do we mean by writing style? Um, what style should you aim at? Should you have a writing style? Um, I'd say three things. Um, one, don't be afraid to express opinions. Um, allow your personality to come through. And thirdly, I'd say aim for clarity at all times. Um, you may have great technical expertise, but if your language is off-putting to potential clients, that defeats the whole purpose. Of, the whole purpose. So, just to run through what you can achieve, what, what you should be looking for for clarity: um, short sentences and paragraphs are better than long ones. Um, can you go through your go through your sentences and see if there's a simpler and shorter way of conveying your meaning? Um, cut out. Uh, can you cut out anything that's repetitive or unnecessary? Um, I, I find this is what makes editing quite hard. Uh, the hardest part of editing is is really cutting to the chase of what you want to say. Um, a couple of my favourite quotes on this uh, in this regard. Uh, Winston Churchill, um, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. And um, Pythagoras said, do not say a little in many words, but a great deal in a few. Do not say a little in many words, but a great deal in a few. So aim for brevity and clarity. Um, avoid jargon. Avoid legalese, um, especially if your audience won't understand it. Uh, don't, um, don't define unnecessary terms. Uh, just sounds like you're talking down to your audience. Um, don't use too many acronyms. It can be very off-putting. Um, people have to look up what, what you mean, what you're talking about. Um, plus, uh, finally, my book there. Um, don't capitalize uh, words that don't need to be capitalized. It's very old fashioned. Uh, firm, partner, associate, uh, these need to be capitalized unless there is a reason to do so. Um, so um, I wanted to speak next about um, elements that you want to in include in your article to ensure that you are read. You want to be persuasive, um, but how can you do so? Use topic sentences, uh, a sentence that expresses the main idea of the paragraph that follows. These are very helpful to the reader. Um, make sure every paragraph relates to your heading. Um, I'd say no more than seven, sen seven sentences to a paragraph, otherwise, it's undigestible, um, your, your paragraph. Keep sentences short, about three and a half lines in length. If longer, um, you probably want to think about uh, two sentences. Examples and case studies. Case studies are absolutely excellent, but be careful not to give the reader too much unnecessary detail. Um, Banish the passive voice. What do I mean by the passive boy, voice? Um, boy hit the ball against the wall is the active voice. Um, the ball was hit against the wall. So use the active voice. Uh, finally, to be persuasive, read the article out loud to yourself um, when you finish. And it doesn't, set, it doesn't roll off your tongue. It won't be a smooth experience for the reader. Um, finally, I wanted to say that at all times, you should do your best to try and be engaging. You want your articles to stand out and be enjoyable to read. Um, ask yourself, do you actually have a novel angle? Alex mentioned this before. Um, 
you should, if you haven't got another angle, do some more research. Is there a way you can distinguish your content from other articles? Or think about your experience um, and what you can bring from, from that to provide a new angle. Include where relevant to personal anecdotes, uh, your experience, client stories. Um, ask yourself, can you offer a solution no other firm is offering? Uh, but above all, above all, I'd say aim in all of this, aim for a clear style, a well-structured article that's easy to read. And finally, where relevant, where possible, make your article actionable. Um, as always, think about the client, think about the reader. Can you provide the reader with, with a series of steps that they can take? Uh, that's all I want to do say on that um i'll say some more on distributing the article your articles but i'll hand back now to my colleague alex holton hi um alex thank you very much for for, for that um it's very helpful um I, I i really just want to move on to have we lost this have we lost the slides have we Oh, we got it. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of intervening for a, for a very brief time here. Um, Alex is, is our, I mean, sort of, yeah, going back to Alex is more our detail guy and I'm more our, our big picture guy. But the, the, the last section is this on, um, or the last main section on the distribution of articles. Um, and, and, and I, I just didn't want to miss the opportunity to reinforce this because say it, it, it is just, so much the um the, the it's it's the the the, the simplest win on, on all of this if you don't get an if, if you write a great article and it doesn't get read um then um then then you're not going to uh, going to succeed um in, in in whatever your objectives were um yeah, similarly if you want to write a not very good article and it doesn't get read that may be an advantage but um but 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 um, I, I'm I'm going to hand back to Alex, who who say who who sort of has a a, a much better knowledge than I do of the uh, of the various products available um, distributed in article. And one of the issues now is there are so many um, different opportunities to, um, to 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 distribute an article, and it's and it's very difficult to to to, to know what. I, I, as I said earlier, certainly you know um, the, the main the main vehicles we've used have been um, Mailshot and um, and LinkedIn, and uh, and Mailshot for us has been far more successful. Although um, you know Link, LinkedIn has such power um, and such a massive um, audience for you if, if certainly if you have, have a number of followers and yet sort of certainly we, we found it quite um, quite difficult to, um, to to unlock the key to that but um, anyway I back back to Alex okay thank you Alex um, so distributing your article um, the obvious place to start with at least is your website um, but it may not have great domain authority. Your website may just not be ranking very highly with the search engines. So uh, there's a number of things and you should try and distribute your article as widely as possible. Um, starting with, um, if you are, you have the budget, um, there are content, what we call content aggregation platforms that people may have heard of may be familiar with, uh, Lexology and Mondak are the leading um, platforms. Um, they take articles from your website or you supply them with articles. They then distribute them to tens or hundreds of thousands of readers who have asked to receive articles on your specific topic or about your jurisdiction. And they have a very high domain authority with the search engines. They're very targeted at corporate counsel and law firm uh, readership. Um, 
they have wide syndication, Lexus, Nexus, Westlaw, ACC, Walters Kluwer, syndicate um, the platforms. And they also provide tremendous analytics to tell you who's reading and engaging with your article. Um, and that provides you with the names of people, firms who are reading, and you can then build a further relationship with them um, in that way. Um, so if you do have the budget for the aggregate platforms, consider those, because that can add up hugely to distributing your articles. Other important, there are other important article sites. Um, hg.org um, is uh, particularly strong in the US, and that's a very good source. If you're ranked in any of the legal directories, your firm, Chambers or Legal 500, they provide opportunities for article distribution. Um, obviously, we heard at the beginning, uh, Philip asked about specific industry publications, and uh, there were some people who said they um, send their articles to those publications. Um, you should do this in, in a careful way. Um, for example, if you wanted um, to place an article in a construction uh, litigation um, publication, find out which, which publications are available, um, find out where construction lawyers or construction people are, which art, which publications they're looking at, which are the relevant industry titles, um, and familiar, familiarize yourself with those publications, their style, what type of legal articles they provide, and then send a pitch to them, providing a, a brief outline of the subject, why it will be of interest, who it will be of interest to, what your article will cover, uh, the number of words, those sort of details. So those are the industry publications, uh, social media, very important, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, um, Pinterest and Instagram. Someone mentioned in Instagram. It's a good reason to include images in your article. Um, so think about Pinterest and Instagram. Um, coming back to LinkedIn, there's a wide number of ways um, to include your article in LinkedIn, uh, on your personal profile page, the company page, any groups that you're in as well. Um, other thing to think about are email, doing an email shot to specific clients or referral sources, sending your article or, or, or a PDF of your article in an email. Um, if your firm has a newsletter, most firms do um, include the article in, in a, your firm newsletter. Um, insert links in your web, in your, on your website generally to your article. Um, this is quite important for cross-selling purposes. And um, those are all different ways to distribute your article. But think about what else the article could be. Uh, what I call shape-shifting your article. Could you create um, an infographic, for example, using the main points in your article, um, and then post the infographic on social media sites with a link back to the original article? Um, could you design a slide presentation from your article, um, animate the slide with perhaps with a video, um, develop a live presentation based on the article, or even turn the article into a script for a podcast. So a huge range of options on how can you get the most out of your article. Um, that's I think all I wanted to say about distribution. I'm going to hand back to my colleague for some concluding remarks. Hi, Alex. Thank Thanks very much uh, for that, and thank you. So thank you to everyone for for for, for joining and um, and for for, for listening. Um, and I think we're we're kind of all lined up for for some questions. Um, I mean, I think ab above all, the the messages we would uh, 
we would repeat are um, you know, know why you're writing an article, know what your um, your objectives for that article are, um, think about the article, um, you know, make make sure it's well i mean make sure it's the right length for the audience and that that will often mean shorter than you think it is um because you know, say a lot a lot of people are are very passionate and that's great about their subjects but uh the the, the audience isn't always as passionate and they 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 often want to understand the commercial reasons for it um rather than anything else and um uh, look at it in the big picture. You know, plan what you're what you're going to do. Um, I, I'm going to say on an annual basis, simply because that's the most standard cycle of time. But um, work that out and and think about you know um, how you distribute it and you know make sure you 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 get sort of um, maximum for your uh, for your investment. So so they're they're they're, they're the big points. But say we we are we are now open for for questions and um and let's please fire away thank you thank you thank you very much uh, alex and alex i think you're seeing all the compliments everybody is saying that this is has been most insightful most interesting and um the questions are beginning to come in um i've been caught off guard by the Q&A box, not knowing how to operate it. I can read questions posted to the Q&A. I am not sure if I can post my own. And um, uh, please, I am happy if you use either forum, whether you use the Q&A or the chat box. These slides will be shared to the members at the address that you used to register for this event. So please, um, uh, you will receive the slides. If we have any pressing questions, please share. Uh, if I may make a comment, I've really enjoyed the explanation on what Mondag and Mondak and lexicology are and what it is that they do. I've been seeing them, but I had no idea what their business was. So understanding that these uh, two uh, aggregate articles and channel them on request to let's say, um, persons out there who've asked for this information is very, very exciting. Um, there was a gentleman who said writing an article got him a job. I would be very, very keen to give him two minutes. I think it was a gentleman. I'd be very um, keen to give him two minutes to explain. Um, experienced testimonies are always the best teacher. So having a local test like that would be really really powerful there yeah, please let um where the questions where the questions let's see in the chat box chat box it's all complimentary welcome again great insightful presentation nice presentation great presentation no we need questions yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, just, I'm just, just really looking appreciate. through the chat box sort of scrolling over it up it backwards um and i think one one one, yeah. one sort of um I mean, we, the compliments are great and keep them coming, but the, in terms of specific questions, uh, what, what is the estimated uh, cost brackets budget for the aggregation platforms? Um, Alex, you're, you're much better placed to answer that than I am. Yes, um, it does depend on how many um, articles that you're going to write. Um, the um, minimum charge um, is probably about uh, two thousand uh, pound GB pounds, um, but um, obviously they have different bands. Um, if you're writing a um, hundred articles um, a year, um, the charge is going to be higher. Um, if anybody is interested in the uh, in Lexology, uh, we do have a relationship with them. And um, we can um, almost certainly obtain a better price for you than if you were dealing direct. And we'd be happy if anybody is interested in this um, for them for, for you to contact us and um, we can um, arrange something for you. So you'll pay a little bit less um, 
than you would be paying if you pay direct. Thank you, Alex. So the admin says that we can allow people to take the microphone if they raise their hands. For those who are posting, I just wanted to throw in a bit of, of excitement. Can you type the name of your country and pick the flag? So we see where you're coming from, just for that small excitement. There is one question, which is, what is the difference between a keynote address and an article? Um, key, key, keynote addresses are are usually at a conference or um, that, that, I mean I would certainly my understanding of them you, 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 you may go to the IBA or some something like that and people will um, will will a keynote a keynote address is, is the sort of the the star billing um, for, for somebody talking at that talking at one of those. Um, that, that, now that may on occasion be supported by an article or, or, or whatever, whereas an article is, 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 is something that's basically written. I mean, obviously, a lot of these things have become blurred with, with multimedia. Thank you. There's a very interesting uh, question here from Nancy Kagepi, who I will take a guess is from Kenya. She says, is it advisable to write articles on topical issues? Or an article, or write articles on areas of one's expertise. Uh, I, I would say to that, it's advisable to write articles where you have a a clear target audience, and that target audience is um, you know, are people who, in most instances, you you think may send you work. There's no there's no right or wrong about it, but you you know you. One of the fundamentals to this is is to understand who you're writing for, um, and if 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 you think that um, the people you're writing for have a demand for for one or other of those things, then um, then that's uh, then I proceed on that basis. Very good, very good, Alex. Very good, Alex. Um, Alinda Ahawe has raised her hand. Admin. Um, is that my my ability to allow her to speak, Alinda Ahawe? Uh, let's see. You can Arinda. proceed to unmute and speak. <clears throat> yes, Arinda, you may take the floor. Arinda, you may take the floor. Okay, Arinda, you can unmute. Okay, right. Arinda, as we wait for you to unmute, um, let's see what other questions we have. Yes. Is there a specific format? This is Godfrey Molly, who is asking, is there a specific format on writing articles for them to look presentable? This is uh, about look. Yes, what should the article look like? Um, I think and <laughs> that's quite a broad question to, uh, to, to I mean, yeah, clearly articles, I mean, you, you right, let, let's say some of the things they shouldn't look like. Um, they shouldn't be sort of too compacted into, you know, just a mass of words. Um, I think um, if, you know, if you're trying to write a business article, bullet points always work um, pretty well. Um, headings always work pretty well because I think you know, it sort of breaks things up. Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot a lot depends on your audience, but um, I, I would I would sort of uh, try and keep it. Um, if if you go over one page for a, for an article, um, I, I couldn't can't tell you off the top of my head how many how many sort of average words that is but I mean if you go I would think if you go over sort of 1500 words for an article you want to know why you're doing that that's um you know that, that that's quite significant I would definitely say headings I would definitely have um you can you can sometimes um think how you can make your article look more interesting instead of 
just plain text, you could have a Q&A. So you could have a series of questions that you give the answer uh, to. And um, that is something which I've suggested to clients. And uh, we've done an interview where we put forward uh, some questions and they provide the answers. And um, that is, is sometimes it's an alternative format to a conventional article um, that, um, that works very well. And obviously, if you writing an article on your website, then you have um, an opportunity for um, including images, pictures, etc. There, there's a, there's a, I'm just just sort of I'm, I'm, apologies as I know there's some sort of questions in both the chat and the the Q and A. So I'm looking at the questions in the chat now, and I'm simply because it's the the most user friendly I'm, I'm sort of working upwards um so question is should the writing include the use of legalese or should we stick to plain english um generally i would say stick to plain english unless your audience is um is, is a lawyers and sort of probably um fairly academic lawyers i mean one again going back to the the directory stuff one of the things you have to do with the directories is is write work highlights um and and if you start if you write work highlights and they are very very complex and go into the, the, the researchers generally aren't lawyers so if you write work highlights that, that are full of legalese um then then you're gonna sort of lose your audience pretty quickly so uh, generally um plain English, although there may be a particular circumstance where you're writing for lawyers that legalese would work. Um, there's also a question, I don't know, Alex, you might go at this. Is there any difference between academic articles and professional articles? Um, yes, I would say quite, quite, a, big, um, quite a big difference. Um, academic articles are often uh, peer reviewed um, so that um, there's a, a series of um, of gatekeepers, if you like, who um, are uh, imposing rigorous standards on your article. It's for it, an academic article, by definition, is for an academic audience. Um, so often will be more theoretical, perhaps, um, whereas a professional article is uh, by by definition for for um end, end practitioners um and so it's much more likely to um to have an emphasis on um what the practitioner can do to have as i said before actionable steps um so i i would say there's quite a big difference and in publishing um it's very much a segmented um um, industry, you would have academic um, commissioners, academic editors, and professional editors and professional commissioners, and, and they are quite uh, distinct, uh, distinct things, distinct disciplines, if you like. Okay, um, a couple more questions. What are the key elements of an article? I mean, we, we have a handout that we've, we've produced, um, which hopefully would be distributed, um, Philip, I'm sure we'll confirm, but will be distributed with um, with the um, the PowerPoint, um, and and that really goes into to that in some detail. Um, question: Do we offer mentorship on article writing? Um, I, we'd look at it. I think is the, is the answer. I, I I don't. I mean, we tend to work with clients on a a reasonable scale. Um, and we're not really we're not really geared for for sort of um, the smaller assignments. So it would depend a bit on on whether that was 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 a fit for us. But we would certainly, uh, if if you explain in more detail what you were looking at, um, we would uh, we would consider that. Um, let's have a look. Right. If if I got you right, you um, seem to have encouraged adding one's experience for the article to stand out. Which features of the experience should be added? Um, 
I mean, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, the answer to so many of these questions is it depends on who you're trying to impress, really. Um, I mean, you know, if you're if you're right, if, if you're a practitioner who does a bit of corporate, a bit of employment, a bit of real estate, and you're writing an article about real estate, um, you should put something about your real estate practice. If if you're um, if you're writing about, I mean, I, I, the thing people are most interested in is the work you have done um, and and your 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 credentials for for, for work. Um, so you know you, you need to tailor it so it's relevant to the audience, and um, you know the, 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 if, if you're if you're writing an article about um, I don't know. A, a, a shipping case um, and you're writing an article about shipping litigation all you've ever done is uh, non-contentious work then then you know you're not quite uh, you, you, you perhaps just want to focus generally on on shipping or, or you know sort of if you don't feel you've got the expertise right at all um, let's have a look thing how can young lawyers use writing articles where a lawyer is limited? I think is how how can young lawyers um, write articles that um, that that compete with um, with established senior lawyers? Well, I mean certainly you can do things on 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 things like LinkedIn. I don't know what what it is that's that's um, holding you back. It may be the culture in the in the jurisdiction that's um, that's essentially preventing you from uh, from from writing, and that you fear that your more senior peers will um, will will dislike you doing it. Um, but but you know something like LinkedIn, something you, um, perhaps other social media. Um, is certainly an opportunity which I, I can't speak for how the reaction you'll get from your senior peers but I'm not sure senior peers is is not a contradiction in terms but I can't um I can't uh, yeah that that that, that would be seem to be the, the sort of obvious um place so. Right. How, how, how basically taking articles, writing articles is time consuming. Um, you know, how, how do you best use your time? Well, the first thing I'd say you best use your time is by writing articles that have a shelf life, um, because you then need to write one article um, a year rather than 10 um, and, and then sort of distribute that as, as widely as possible. Secondly, you know, keep keep things succinct um as alex quoted from from um from churchill sometimes it takes longer to write something that's shorter but um you know that 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 that's um and i think i think you know i think you have to ask yourself if this is you um uh, i mean i you know i i, I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone writing articles but if it's something that doesn't actually work for you personally um, then, um, then I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily do it. Right? Is it necessary to include authorities in an article, e.g., case law? Well, I mean that that e.g., case laws, laws, etc. Now, if you're writing an academic article, then you need to cite your sources. Yes. Um, if you're writing a more general article aimed at, um, at sort of the, the the wider business community, um, no. Um, and how does a young lawyer benefit from article writing? Well, I mean, I think in all the ways that um, that, 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 that we've discussed, it, it helps build your profile. You know, we've been talking about firm brand, but you can, you know, you can also talk about um, individual brand. Um, you know, it, it certainly, someone mentioned earlier, I don't, don't think I saw the question, but someone mentioned earlier, Someone who got a job from um, from writing an article, and um, uh, and you know that if you if you do it well enough, target it well enough, then uh, that that's entirely feasible. Thank you, Alex. I just 
wanted to post uh, to call for another poll and this is to invite the members uh, again first by posting their flag to say which firm in their jurisdiction is a leader in writing articles okay so uh, let's say you are from tanzania put the flag and say xyz advocates just to keep it uh, ticking along uh, alex did you see the question about the percentage of permitted plagiarism and there was another question about whether the principles that we have discussed today also apply to newsletters yeah, I mean, plagiarism so is plagiarism. I mean, there is no, um, <laughs> and uh, I mean, it, it may it may be less likely to be identified, but um, but it, well, in some ways, with search engines, it's more likely to be identified. But um, but yeah, you know, the, the, the you know, if if you're holding out your work, someone else's work as your own, it's plagiarism. Good, good. And the other question about whether the principles apply to newsletters? Uh, apply to what, sorry? Whether these principles that we have discussed today in your presentation, do they also apply to someone writing a newsletter? Uh, yes, exactly. I mean, you know, the, the, the writing articles, again, is... I mean, there is a whole range of, of things, and you know, and in many ways, um, we, we've put together a presentation here, and and many of you will do that from from time to time, uh, and and what we've said applies to to newsletters just as much as it does to um, uh, to uh, to presentations as to articles. You know, we 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 do live in a world where you know where it is multimedia and. Uh, uh, and, 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 and indeed the principles, uh, many of the principles apply to, 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 to making a, an oral presentation as well. Um, you know, I, I haven't done the exercise of going through it line by line, identifying the differences, but, but, but most of those things will be, be similar. Good, good, good. So we're getting examples of law firms that do these uh, publications and we're getting them across the region so um, I think it's very useful for the rest of us maybe to go and visit these uh, farm websites and see how they write, how they arrange uh, their present, their, uh, their articles, number of, of, of um, pages uh, when they write. Then the, the, those kind of questions about are they writing on something topical or must it necessarily be expertise based? I think we will get up, up live examples. I'm surprised there are few few farms from Uganda, there we go. Yes, Uganda, uh, Mr. Munabi has posted. Uh, Tanzania has got lots of farms that are doing this. Okay, Rubea and Co from Burundi. Yes, yes, yes. So we're getting examples. We're getting examples. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, this is very encouraging. Um, we wanted the, the person who said he got a job from writing an article. I think that would be a solid example of driving business by writing <laughs> and why we must do it. If you're there, please um, show, uh, show, show us your hand. Then there was the lady we were looking for who wanted to speak. Um, yes, Arinda Ahawe, if you're there, let us know. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, good. Good, I think the questions, um, I don't see any more, any new questions. I don't see new questions coming in. Okay, very good compliment. Dr. Kariuki Mwigua is the most prolific legal writer in the whole of Africa. He publishes articles frequently and does a book on arbitration or environmental law every year. This is in Kenya, okay? And you see, now that we are all East Africans, we want to know about people like this. We want to hear things like this because I, I have never heard his name. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. Yes, more examples are coming in. 
And we're also grateful to the people. I don't know whether they're from Cameroon and based in Rwanda, or they are in Cameroon from Rwanda, but there are quite a number of people who posted Cameroon. I say bonjour mes amis. We are pleased that you are here with us. Good. Good. If there are any questions that I've missed. Uh, did you see this one, Alex? There was, if it's a comparative analysis article of case law, no, no, this is the one about plagiarism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this one is writing an article limited to territorial jurisdiction. Okay. Or should it be written in plain English? This is from Hadida Kasim. Should we limit to territorial jurisdiction or should we write in plain English? Um, right, sorry. I, uh, where, where, where's, um, I know I mentioned one that was about plain English. <laughs> I can't find it now. Um, but, 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 um, no. Uh, I think that that was the one about sort of including um, was it that including case um, case references and legally and things like that. I mean, and the the answer to all of these questions, in a sense, is it depends on your audience. I mean, that you know, and that's why it's so so important to know who you're who, you know who you're writing for really in the first place. Because say you know if uh, if you're writing for a you know for a highly technical, highly academic audience, um, you, you, you pitch it somewhat differently than, I mean, and so, some people we, will be great at that. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I certainly wouldn't claim any massive academic uh, prowess and, uh, and, and I certainly feel I'm much better at writing the kind of high level strategic, um, big picture sort of um, uh, articles, which you know, I suppose essentially, um, fits my mindset a, a lot better. Very good, very okay. good. I mean, can, can, can I, I mean, can I just sort of finish I, you know, if the, 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 the various materials that we're, we're, that we're going to be sent, the submission, sorry, the presentation and the, um, the supporting notes. Um, if anyone has a, um, that they all have our contact details on and if you'd like to drop us a line um you yeah, know please do and we'll you know we'll uh, i mean obviously <laughs> it depends a bit on volume um but yeah we'll, we'll we'll do our best to um to, to reply and you know if, if people feel that, that that they could see value in our services but we'll obviously we have to give you some details of that as well okay Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, I think this is a good point to sign this off. Uh, as promised, Alex and Alex uh, of ILFS have shared with us a PowerPoint presentation along with written notes, detailed notes uh, on their presentation today. Both the PowerPoint and the notes are easy reads. And uh, please grab yourself a cup of Ugandan coffee Yes, there's a particular reason I'm saying Ugandan coffee, but grab yourself a cup of Ugandan coffee and enjoy the slides, ruminate over them uh, after today. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much to ILFS, thank you very much to EL, EALS, and thank you to you all. I wish you a very happy rest of the day. Thank you, well, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Philip, and thank you very much, everyone. And um, we'll, uh, you know, hope, hope, hope to hear from some of you. Thank you. <laughs>